dead body has been found in the same area where authorities have been searching for a missing teen from Laguna Niguel. We'll show you how the boy's family is reacting to the scary news. Plus, some Anaheim officials aren't exactly placing a halo on the head of Angel's owner, Art Marino. We'll explain why. You're watching Chapman News. Good afternoon. I'm Zach Coomer. And I'm Madison Wade. Thanks for tuning in to Chapman News. Anaheim City Council is considering a measure that could allow the Angels to drop the city's name from the team. Reporter Diane Gerstenfeld has more on the details of the proposed deal. By the way, if they do leave in 2017, 2018, or 2019, it'll be because of this action tonight. Mayor Tom Tate is not happy. He and his fellow council members debated a controversial order that would allow the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim to extend their 1996 lease for three more years. So why would we as a city want to open the door to the Angels and say, you know what, uh, I mean, I want the Angels to stay. I love the Angels. Under the current team owner, Artie Moreno, the Angels would have the ability to terminate the lease as early as October of 2016 and as late as February of 2019. Angels chairman Dennis Cool, who was accepting an award that night, petitioned the council to accept Moreno's signed memorandum. Many citizens weighed in on the issue, but felt shortchanged. Mayor Tate said the memo didn't even pass his desk till Friday night, four days before the proceeding as we were heading into Labor Day weekend. So I'd like to make a motion continue uh, just the binding uh, lease amendment that will be binding if we vote on this tonight. Do I have a second? No one echoed the mayor's motion to postpone the decision. In a four to one vote, section seven and eight outlining the early termination clause was approved by the rest of the council. This is just a very, very framework of which we're going to work with. And there's so many details to work out that it's going to take some time. And uh, we're just glad that they approved it and we can move forward now. So what does this decision mean for the people of Anaheim? As Mayor Tate states, it leaves the door swung wide open for the Angels to leave town and take the name Anaheim with them. In the agreed upon terms, the city practically donates the 50 acre land around the stadium to the Halos for a rate of only $1 an acre, an area estimated to be worth over $300 million. They talk about, you know, being able to control all of the real estate around this, the area and it's only for their benefit. Anaheim would get no, no benefit at all. I don't think that's quite even, Stephen. Now that the deal has passed, City Council hopes they will be able to keep the Angels in town for 40 more years. From Angel Stadium, I'm Diane Gersenfeld, Chapman News. The Angels lease was extended on Tuesday. It can take months of negotiation before we'll know the fate of the team's name and if they'll be sticking around in Anaheim for good. A Laguna Niguel family is awaiting the identification of a dead body found in the same area where their 19-year-old son went missing earlier this week. L.A. County firefighters discovered the burnt-up body in Castaic when they were called to the scene of a supposed brush fire. They found the corpse in the same area where a search is currently underway for Bryce Laspisa of Laguna Niguel, who was last heard from one week ago. Authorities found last piece's overturned SUV in the area with his cell phone, laptop, and wallet still inside. His parents say he was driving home from Sierra College north of Sacramento. Investigators still have yet to link the body to last piece. So out of character. I know all moms say that they're close to their sons, but we really are close. And that's why this not knowing is just heartbreaking. At this point, there's, there, there's nothing connected to that at this point other than being in this location in the area that he went missing. Investigators also say that they are treating the dead body as a homicide. Laspisa is 5'11", about 170 pounds, and has red hair with blue eyes. Authorities have now identified the body of a homicide victim found in Newport Bay on Monday. 
A small memorial lies where 28-year-old Nancy Hammer was found lying face down underneath the Newport Bay Bridge. Autopsy shows Hammer died from a gunshot wound. This is video of where her body was found. Hammer has a four-month-old baby in custody of an OC Child Protective Services and a 12-year-old son being raised by her grandmother alone. Anyone in with information is encouraged to call Newport Beach Police Department. The OC District's Attorney Office is investigating a shooting by Irvine police officers after they, were sh after they shot a suspected child molester outside of his apartment earlier this week. Police were preparing to serve a search warrant for 35-year-old Ronald Williams on the 1100 block of Crested Bird in Irvine. A department spokeswoman says that officers were preparing to detain Williams for lewd conduct when it, with a child when he was shot. No officers were injured in the shooting. Williams was taken to a local hospital. Police also say that two handguns were also found at the crime scene, one of which was a fake found in the car door pocket of Williams' vehicle. A fiery crash just a few miles from campus left a 24-year-old Huntington Beach resident dead early Saturday morning. Police say that Joanna Mace drove into the cement sign near the intersection of Struck Avenue and Catella. Orange Police Department arrived at the scene and pulled Mace out of the car, which had already burst into flames. She was rushed to a local hospital where she was declared dead. Police are advising everyone to take extra precaution while driving, especially at night. The civil war in Syria rages on as America decides whether to get involved. Here's a look into the lives of rebel soldiers as they battle the army of Bashir al-Assad. Take a listen. The conflict in Syria escalates as snipers, seen here holed up in a crumbling apartment building, defend against the tanks and mortar strikes of Bashir al-Assad. Every 15 minutes, mortar rounds leave Damascus targeting Syrian suburbs. Just last week, a ferocious attack was reported when a napalm bomb was dropped on a school, killing all the children inside. Back at home this week, the United States has a tough decision to make. President Obama sets up his plan of attack. And that's why I've made a second decision. I will seek authorization for the use of force from the American people's representatives in Congress. Our military has positioned assets in the region. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs has informed me that we are prepared to strike whenever we choose. Moreover, the chairman has indicated to me that our capacity to execute this mission is not time sensitive. Though timing is everything, especially for the Syrian rebels, who have cleverly rigged IED explosives inside clothing mannequins. This will be a tough week ahead for not only the rebels, but the U.S. Congress, as support for the administration's proposed strike has Congress divided. How do you define that weakness, well Senator? As our adversaries. Well, I think the weakness is that he's, he said again yesterday, I'm going to take military action. Well, the world is saying, you know, your predecessors, whether it was Bill Clinton, Ronald Reagan, uh, we could go back even further when something like this has happened and the national security of the United States has been put at risk, then presidents lead. Whether an intervention is done by force or by diplomacy, Syria is one issue that has the world divided. I'm Zach Coomer, Chapman News. The U.S. Senate votes next week on whether to back the president on striking Syria. Just last night, Russian President Vladimir Putin warned the U.S. His country would not stand by if such an attack took place. With a new school year ahead, there's been a lot of changes on campus. Coming up, we'll explain why the Chapman Law School just hit the lotto. And Long Beach Unified School District welcomes a new addition to the family. Wes Rappaport explains in a live report just ahead. And we have the first heat advisory warning in effect. Plus, I got some kids for you. Surviving your football tailgate this weekend. All that after the break, you're watching Chapman News.
you give you a hand? <laughs> no thanks, Dad. I got it. Okay. I'm gonna go fix the lamp in your room. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. How you doing? My name's Steve. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. If you could have done a little what? better. What? Come on! You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Welcome back to Chapman News. It's been a great summer for Chapman University's law school, and that's because their bank account just went up a whole lot. Here's the details. Chapman Law School is about to be adopted into a whole new family. The school was founded in 1995, originally called the Donald P. Kennedy Law School, but that's all about to change. The institution just received the second largest donation in law school history, a grand total of $55 million. The big bucks come from a prominent OC real estate developer and Chapman alumnus Dale E. Fowler and his wife Sarah Ann. But just how will the money be spent? Dean Campbell breaks it down. So what I would like to see first off is a committed stream of funds to support the attorneys coming in and co-teaching, first of all. Second, and among many possibilities, scholarships so that students don't have to pay so much, bringing in some more talent in the career services area, people who will help our students get jobs. We will get more interviews the more people we have working in the career services office to get the jobs. Chapman Law sure is raking in the big bucks, but it's also burning up the charts. U.S. News and World Report ranks it in the top 100 law schools in the country. I'm Zach Coomer, Chapman News. The official name change will feature a ribbon-cutting ceremony on September 10th. All heads of the university, including President Jim Doty, will be there. Here to tell us more from the Chapman Law School, Dean Tom Campbell. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Nice to be with you, Miss <laughs> Wade, Mr. Kimmer. Thank you. So $55 million. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. I, and and uh, the, the credit goes to the Fowlers. Uh, Dale and Ann Fowler, just tremendously generous people who want to share what they've been able to create in California and in America with, with us. Uh, and President Jim Doty, who worked to bring them into the Chapman family. I'm just curious, what do you think the long-term goal of law school is? Top 10, top 20 in the future? Let's say to educate our students to be practicing lawyers who are productive members of our economy and society, who create opportunity instead of impede opportunity, who are honorable, trustworthy, and know their, know their material. The practical training is what I want, and kind of, candidly, the ratings are secondary. That's amazing. So how can we see this generous donation being played out in the future for Chapman's Law School? Well, the first step is going to be the gift, which will happen officially on Tuesday. Uh, then I'm going to be working with the Fowlers over all the years as to our needs in any given year, and we'll be a collaborative relationship. Absolutely. But my guess is that the first area, most likely, is to bring in practicing attorneys who will co-teach with the professors. So you'll have the professor who knows the substance of the law really well, with an attorney who just brought a lawsuit under that theory or just defended a lawsuit or just drafted a contract. So the students learn from both. And to do that, we'll be needing a little money to bring in the practicing attorney. The Fowler's gift makes that possible. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, and it's an exciting road ahead for the law school. Thank you for your kind attention, Mr. Kumer, Ms. Wade. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. All right. Hey, it's heating up out there, and it's not getting any better. Oh, my goodness. Tom Jackson, please tell me it's going to cool down, man. I'm so sorry, man, but it's not going to get any colder this weekend. It's staying like a scorcher. Right now, the temperatures are about 5 to 15 degrees hotter than average for this time of year. However, I can say later on in the week, it can start to cool down. But for right now, we'll go look at our national weather. As you can see, down in Florida, it's staying, staying a little hot, so a little bit of a little bit of storms coming that way up in Boston, northeast. It's looking, I don't know, average for about this time, September. Looking about a nice fall. They should expect a good leave change and coming soon. 
But right now, let's go take a look at the northwest and our Doppler weather forecast because we've got a few storms coming our way. If you can see right up here, there's a lot of severe storms heading over there. And unfortunately, that could mean some delays to any of those football games going on this weekend over there. Um, all I can say is just look out and expect for some delays. Now let's take a look over at our area of the woods down in the southwest. If you can see down here, Los Angeles is about 81. Phoenix, we are complaining about the heat, but they're at 96. Vegas, 88. Um, San Jose is staying cool at 64. It could have something to do with the storms up there. But right now, over especially in Orange County, we got a heat advisory until 7 p.m. this, uh, this night. Uh, so look out for that. So make sure you stay indoors if possible, or at the very least, put on that, put on that air conditioning. But looking now over at that this weekend with the football forecast, I'm saying tailgate what you want, but here's a few tips in case you want to know how to miss that heat and stay cool. First, be sure to drink a lot of water. There's no doubt in my mind that you should be able to stay hydrated because with the heat, you're looking at uh, sweating a lot. Stay loose like clothing. I know those footballs, uh, those football jerseys are nice and loose, so stay there. Make sure you also bring a tent. Shade is your friend and also, be sure to keep, if you are 21 and over and you want to indulge a little bit in that alcohol, that dehydrates you, so just keep down a little bit. Now let's take a look over at our five-day forecast. At the moment, on Friday, we're looking at uh, 95, a nice hot bit of weather, and <laughs> we're looking a little bit more over on 81, or 91 on Saturday at the high, Sunday 88, Monday 85, and I'm telling you, like I promised you guys, Tuesday 78, partly cloudy, we're finally cooling off. Now I'm trying... Told you it's cooling off. That doesn't mean this weekend you're not going to be sweating a bit. Make sure you pop up that uh, AC back over at the desk. Thank you so much for that report. With the start of the new year, students have more to sweat about than just classes. This summer, Chapman University gave the student workout facility a total makeover. The fitness center now has brand new versions of some old equipment, like new Synergy machines and various freeform weights, such as kettlebells and medicine balls. The university also installed a new impact absorbing floor made of recycled rubber, full length mirrors, an improved sound system, plus energy efficient TVs. The fitness center is also extending its hours. It's now open Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. and weekends from 8 a.m. through 12 p.m. For some incoming freshmen, starting high school can be a daunting task. That means some new friends and maybe a new schedule. But imagine if everything was brand new. The classrooms, the teachers, even the principal. Wes Rappaport joins us from Long Beach where McBride High School has day one of classes this week. Wes. Madison, good afternoon to you. A brand new high school opened its doors to students this week, but this one doesn't quite have your typical curriculum. The principal here says this unique form of education guides students towards specific career paths. Ernest McBride Senior High School opened up for its inaugural freshman class Wednesday. Principal Steve Rockenbach says these early weeks have brought both some excitement and new concepts. We're very fortunate to have a wonderful group of staff members, both with teachers and the support staff on campus. The students had the opportunity to apply for the school, and they're getting some, a chance to be kind of the, the pioneers for a new type of education. Students and staff excited for these new developments, while the community was hesitant at first with the addition of Long Beach Unified's 12th high school. Their instantaneous thought was the old traditional vocational ad, and that's so much different than what this is all about. We're fortunate enough to have the opportunity to provide students both a high-end college prep curriculum, but we're also linking that to their career pathway. There are similar models like this across the country. A program in San Diego was used as a basis for McBride's curriculum. It's not unique to have linked learning or have pathway learning at schools, but being able to build the school from the ground up with that model in mind, I think that's the biggest difference. And I think that's what really helps us stand apart is because we're not trying to fit a, a learning model into an existing plant. We're able to build the plant around the learning model. The school accepted about 200 applications from incoming freshmen for the 2013-2014 school year. Principal Rockenbach says they plan on enrolling around 1,000 students by 2016. And those three career paths here at McBride, health and medical, public service and forensics, and engineering. Now the school name, Ernest McBride Sr., he was a civil rights leader and founder of the NAACP here in Long Beach. Reporting from McBride Senior High School, I'm Wes Rappaport, Chapman News. Thank you, Wes. There's a new spot around campus where even students under 21 can get a drink, but only if you're being 
really healthy. The Growl Juice Bar Pub is just the newest health food store to hit the Orange Plaza. It's two doors down from the gluten-free Bite Market, which opened for business three years ago. And it's across the street from the Running Lab. Employees say that the juicery's emphasis on the cold-pressed fruits and veggies is a great way for Orange to stay healthy. Coming up, Kent Paisley breaks down sports for us. Kent, what can we expect from the best campus sports show? Coming up in sports, men's soccer kicks off the season. We have the highlights, plus we go all access inside Chapman football to preview their upcoming season. That's next on the best campus sports show. Oops, yeah, sure. Let's go. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look! I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. Up to 40% of businesses never recover after experiencing a major disaster. Make a plan at ready.gov slash business. Welcome back to Chapman News. Kent Paisley's here with your SoCal Sports Update. What's up, Kent? Hey, guys. Chapman Sports is back again as the men's soccer team kicked off the season to a supportive home crowd against the Wisconsin Oshkosh Titans. The Panthers had many scoring chances, including here, where Chapman senior Nick Echeverry's shot is deflected. Both goalies put on a show as Chapman freshman Yuri Schaefer makes a diving save. The only goal came in after a Chapman turnover as sophomore Matt Cheney scores for the Titans. Oshkosh won the contest 1-0. We talked with Chapman head coach Eddie Carrillo after the game. No, we have a lot of good kids, which is a good feeling. Uh, I thought we played well, and we have, it looks like we have some good depth. So I'm excited about the season. The Panther football team is preparing for their upcoming season. Last year, Chapman had one of their best seasons under current head coach Bob Owens. Trent Schloem reports on the Panthers' outlook for 2013. Chapman. Chapman football ready to kick off their 2013 campaign. The Panthers come off of a 6-3 season with that new pressure, especially from themselves. Skag championship and off to the national playoffs. High hopes for a young team following a bruising fall camp. Jeremiah McKibbins and Josh Irvin, the best offensive and defensive returners, are both already done for the season due to injuries at practice. Actually, it happened... Hours. Don't tell me it was the same day. Oh, uh, same day. How did you sleep that Almost, night, Coach? I didn't sleep well. <laughs> Despite those injuries, senior linebacker Zane Archer keeps looking forward. With those two guys now, it hurts, but we got to keep on going. We got to win. Plus, the Panthers still have to find a quarterback. Keen Stancil, Andrew Chavez, and Kevin Hunter all played in one games for the Panthers a year ago. Then mix Michael Leahy into the picture, who is coming off of a knee injury he suffered in last year's fall camp when he was supposed to be the starter. 
On top of that, the Panthers welcome junior transfer Raymond Huzar. Coach Owens still far from making a decision, and if history repeats itself, don't expect one anytime soon. I would rather start with this crew and find one than to uh, be sitting there with maybe one guy or questionably maybe one guy. We sit with four quarterbacks. A good problem to have. The strength of the Panthers appears to be the defense. And with exceptional depth on the Chapman D, every position is a battle. I don't even have a key spot set right now. So I'm, I'm grinding out every day. Backers are looking really good. Secondary is looking good. Defense is just looking good. We just got to come together as one. But the tone for 2013 starts with head coach Bob Owens. And that tone may be the most positive it's been in years. Do we understand what we have? Yeah. Um, do I think it's going to be a tough season for us? Absolutely. But we're young. We're a good football team. I've got to feel good. From the campus of Chapman University, I'm Trent Schloen, Chapman News. The Panthers travel to Puget Sound for their first game next Saturday, September 14th. Chapman's home opener is September 28th at 7 o'clock. And here's the rest of your week ahead in Chapman Sports. Women's soccer takes on St. Olaf tonight at 7 p.m. on Wilson Field. Cross country will be running this Saturday in the UC Irvine Invite. The men's soccer team travels to UC Santa Cruz for a Sunday 12:30 match. They're at home Monday against Caltech and again play Cal Lutheran at home on Wednesday at 4 p.m. For a complete schedule, you can visit chapmanathletics.com. They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, and by the looks of Timo Solani's golf swing, he shouldn't be changing sports. In a pretty funny video released by the Anaheim Ducks, the 43-year-old winger commits to playing one more year with the Ducks following a horrid outing on the course. In his 21 years in the NHL, the Finnish Flash developed a reputation for being a dangerous scorer and currently ranks 15 on an all-time goals list. Solani said his belief in this year's team is what brought him back to the ice. Canyon High School in Anaheim Hills was witness to many changes on the gridiron. Canyon hired former Orange Lutheran coach Jim Kuna in January to rebuild the program. Early in fall camp, a much more somber change following freshman Mitchell Cook's collapse during warm-ups where Cook later died. Nine months of an emotional roller coaster take us to last night, the first Canyon home game of the Jim Kuna era. No more Olu Red for Coach K on the sidelines, a strange sight for OC football fans, but San Juan Hills was just too much for Canyon. Jacob Gibson finds senior Jordan Pape in the end zone for the score. The Stallions beat the Comanches 29-16. That's it for sports. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kent. Coming up after the break, Adrena has the latest in entertainment. That's right, guys. I've got your entertainment news from the models at Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week to all the food the models shouldn't be eating here at the Orange Street Fair. That's all coming up after the break. Said, I got it. Okay. I'm gonna go fix the lamp in your room. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. How you doing? My name's Steve. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. 
I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. If you could have done a little what? better. What? Come on. You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. News. Adrena Movazian is here with the latest in entertainment. I know you're excited for Fashion Week, Adrena. What can we expect? Thanks, guys. I am so excited for Fashion Week. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about what's happening here on the West Coast. UPB and Chapman Radio have outdone themselves yet again by kicking off the school year right with their fall concert lineup. Students will be able to throw it back with the crunk hip-hop of the Ying Yang Twins and fist pump to the electronic dance beats of DJ Dylan Francis at the Grove of Anaheim one week from today. Tickets are on sale right now in Argyros Farm or online at Chapman's website and can be purchased for $20 now or $25 at the door. This is a show you won't want to miss. Countless celebrities, Southern California's top supporters, and ocean activists gathered at Oceana's annual Sea Change Summer Party. It was a magical night in Laguna Beach as guests sipped champagne while listening to nine-time Grammy winner Joe Crow bet out her hits. Oceana is the world's largest international organization devoted to protecting the world's Earth's oceans and seas. The evening featured a silent and live auction, cocktails, multi-course dinner, and a party lounge to dance away the night. Among the notable guests were So You Think You Can Dance judge Mary Murphy and Revenge star James Tupper. The event was a big su success, raising over $1 million. Thursday in New York was a kickoff to the week fashion lovers everywhere have been waiting for, Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week. From brother-sister design duo Nicholas K to BCBG Max Azria, the designers pulled out all the stops for the first day of the shows. But since it's not quite spring yet, here are your top trends for fall. Classic looks have been revamped or on a whole new level. Get ready for sky-high boots, high waist, and high fashion. Black and white will also be playing a big part this season. Designers Victor and Rolf, Chloe, and Alberta Freddy all featured black and white on their fall ready-to-wear runways. Last season may have been bold and sexy, however, this season is soft and feminine. Ruffles, peplums, and bows are all paving the way for a new poised, confident, and stylish woman. Now, last weekend marked the 41st annual International Street Fair for the city of Orange. Chapman News reporters Alex Bisson and Natalie Aronson were there to experience it all. It's that time of year again, from international taste Fire Beef Teriyaki over here! to eclectic clothing. It's just certain people in certain outfits. We explore the ins and outs of the Orange International Food Fair. We're with Mark from the Long Beach Japanese Language School, and you guys are making hand-rolled sushi, is that correct? Yes, we make uh, all hand-rolled sushi, and uh, it's all for our school uh, fund, uh, fundraisers. I'm here with Mr. Fun. He's made me a balloon hat. He's going to put it on me. Oh, there it is. How do I look? Is it good? Yeah? Oh, can you tell me your favorite part about being a balloon artist? I guess it's just the interaction with the people. Because I'm actually, I've had office jobs. I've had shop jobs. I've had, you know, where you punch the time clock. Well, this is where you actually get out and meet the people and see the kids and have fun. And it wouldn't be the Orange Street Fair without the traditional Danish treat. Yo, yeah, my name is Nicholas, and yeah, this is ridiculous. Not mad, got my money, and it is delicious. Come on, guys, get your hands up. Normally in the wintertime when you're cold, it's snowing outside, you come home, your mom would make you some apple skewer, and you would get nice and warm inside. It takes a master's degree in counseling from Cal State Fullerton to do this. <laughs> We're holding Evo Skiva, Himba Mamala, and Sugar which kind of translates to donuts, raspberry sauce, and powdered sugar in Danish. Now we've tried food from all over the world, from Danish donuts to Irish hot dogs. And we've surely enjoyed it, and we hope you have too. We're here from the Orange Plaza. I'm Alex Fiston. And I'm Natalie Aronson. And that's it for entertainment. I'm sure after seeing all that delicious food from the street fair, you guys are probably starving and are dreaming up next year's cuisine. But I will be dreaming up next year's top trends. <laughs> I am right there with you, actually. I've bought all of my September issues. <laughs> That's great. I'm Zach Coomer. Stay cool this weekend, all right? This... Thanks for watching. I'm Madison Wade.